Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mmm, your pipe makes such a nice smell for an evening. Mm Mm-hmm. It's what the well-dressed man smokes at night. Oh, that's why you smoke it. Oh, that's the only reason. I see. Well, I bet you it doesn't taste as good as it smells. None of that you will not find out. The double standard again. I wonder how soon women will be allowed to smoke pipes. Sir, over my dead body. It's a fine way to talk. My, 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 you certainly do use up ashtrays, don't you? What's that? I said you certainly do use up ashtrays. That's what they're for. Blast it. What'd you say? Consigned ashtray. What is the matter with So darn with small, I keep spilling my ashes out on the table. Ouch, ouch. I'll burn my hand. Just use a little care, dear. Yeah. What I want to know is, why do I have to use such a little ashtray? Oh, here, I'll, I'll empty it out for you. Give me. Claudia, I'm, I'm just emptying my pipe. Now. Well, wait a minute till I empty the ashtray. Now, look what you've done. What have I done? You whisked the ashtray out from under my pipe. Well, how clever of you to catch the ashes in your hand, David. You're so quick. But my hand is not an ashtray. You're doing beautifully, beautifully. I'll just empty this one out and then give it back to you. Now, where did I put the silent butler? Will you hurry up? It's a little warm. Silent butler, silent butler. Isn't that a sweet name for the little business to put the ashes in? Silent butler. Don't be so silent. Where are you? Why can't you wait to empty the ashtray until I'm through smoking my pipe? you're never through. You mm, empty your pipe true. more than you smoke yeah, it. Yeah, you know sure, that? sure, sure. Tap, tap, tap. Ashtrays flooded over. Now, if you have a decent-sized ashtray around here, they wouldn't flood over so fast. Oh, that old story. As a matter of fact, to repeat that old story again, I don't see why we can't have some decent man-sized ashtrays around the house. Because. Because? Yes, because. If I weren't the kind of man who smokes a pipe... All right. Keep your ladylike ashtrays. But you told me you like my smoking a pipe, and I like my smoking a pipe, so why can't I have a decent man-sized ashtray? Because this room is a living room and not a man's club. Well, it's my living room, too, you know. Of course, of course, darling. You have a big chair for you and all the comforts you desire. Mm, No, but one, a little, little, tiny ashtray, yeah. Boy. Now be sensible, David. L- look at this delicate little table. You can't have an enormous ashtray sitting on it. Why not? Because it would be out of kilter. And those those end tables, you can't have enormous ashtrays on them either. It'd be out of kilter. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do they have to have little saucers instead of ashtrays? Well, these fancy little things wouldn't hold because up. Because they fit in with the mood of the room. No, they don't fit in with the mood of my pipe. <laughs> well, you can't have everything. I certainly realize that. Why can't I have a, a big ashtray? Oh, That's David, not much. David, don't there. sound so persecuted. I am persecuted. Here, it's a nice, clean ashtray. You can fill it up to your heart's content. Well, mm, my heart's content is not so easily contented. Here now, where are you going with that ashtray? Just picking it up to dust the ashes off the table. Claudia, I am still sitting here with ashes in my hand. Oh, do you good. Keep the moths out of it. That's carpets. Right. Here you are, grumpy. Grumpy. Oh, now look at this tabletop. Have to wax it tomorrow. Hey, what are you doing with that lamp? I'm just straightening it out. Go on, darling. Read your book. Read my book. Don't let me disturb you. It would take a yogi in the seventh stage not to be disturbed by you when you start feeling neat. Just tidying up a little. I don't like to have ashes floating around. Well, what are you doing down on the floor? Reducing my hips. Uh, You don't have any hips. Worse luck. (sighs) There. Last of the ashes. Thank heavens. I'm not disturbing you, David. No, no. I know by now, when you're reading a book, you don't want to be disturbed. No, you should. Oh, will you look at those poor old dead flowers? How have I ever let, left them around so long? Because you hate throwing anything out. Oh, I guess they're just dead. They're dead. They were right. lovely when they were alive, weren't they? Oh, well, I suppose I better empty them while I'm at it. Can't oh, you do well, anything without there's talking? There's no water in the bowl. No so wonder the flowers are dead, poor things. Now, why do you suppose there's no water in the... Do you think the dogs drank it? Oh, sure. They took to sipping. David, Hmm? you're getting ashes on the table again. Well, it can't be helped again. Well, you could try to get them in the ashtray. A lima bean would be too big for this... this... 
Ashtray. That is a beautiful piece of Staffordshire, David. Staffordshire or Worcestershire or whatever you want to call it is not for pipe ashes. Cigarettes, maybe, but not for pipe. But it's beautiful. Beautiful. David, I've just dusted that table. Look at what... Oh, well. When one has a man around the house, one must expect these things. I yes, suppose. one must. I do love the smell of your pipe. But? But me no buts. But? I suppose every silver lining has its cloud. And every ashes has its pipe. I must philosophize and take the good with the bad. And... I must also take these flowers into the kitchen. They look like their own funeral. A funeral long since dead. My, 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 you're so morbid tonight. All this talk about ashes. It's funny. All the different things that ashes mean. David, Hmm? kiss me. I suppose all of this has just been leading up to that. Of course. My, what a silly girl you are. Dreadful. Now, I'll give you a kiss and then you skadoodle. hmm? It's a bargain. Well, yes. What's the matter? You're know, tickling the back of my neck. I'm not anywhere near the back of your well, neck. Something's tickling the back of my neck. Oh, for heaven's sake, it's the dead flowers. <laughs> I told you that something was... Well, I'll take them right out to the kitchen. I might just as well leave the bowl right there on the table. It looks nice. Darling, you remember who gave us that bowl? No, I haven't the slightest idea. It's a wedding present. And I've been married too long to remember each and every wedding present. Has it really been that long? certainly has. In case you're interested, a girl I went to school with gave it to me. She couldn't be much of a girl. It isn't much of a bowl. I like it. Short and squatty. Mm-hmm. I suppose you prefer the tall, thin ones like ostriches. Oh, yes, I much prefer ostriches. <laughs> I like this one because it looks like the bottom half of a half of a balloon. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. Lovely and heavy, too. It's very convenient. Now, you were going to throw those flowers in the kitchen, remember? Oh, yes, yes, so I was. Yeah, so you were. I'll only be gone a minute, darling. Well, I'll just sit here and pine away. You go right ahead. Is there anything you want from the kitchen while I'm out there? No, not a thing. Oh. A a, a glass of milk, baby. No, not a thing. I'll bring you a box of kitchen matches. I don't need them. You want me to answer that? I suppose that silence means yes. What a night, ash trays, ashes, dead flowers, bowls that aren't ostriches, doorbells ringing... Tucker here. Well, say, I didn't expect it to be you, Mr. Tucker. The doorbell rang. Well, I rang the doorbell as kind of advance notice. Left my extra home. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on in the living room. Uh, Mrs. Norton, she out tonight? No, oh, no, she just went in the kitchen for something. She'll be right back in. I was walking up to Matthew Warren, saw the light burning in your living room, so I thought I'd pop in and pass the time of day with you a bit. Mm, very glad you did. Yeah, with the hour it is, pass the time of night rather than pass the time of day, I guess, eh? <laughs> How about a smoke, Mr. Tucker? Well, I got my pipe with me here. Oh, here, then have some of my tobacco. Well, don't mind if I do. Though I'll warn you, son, it won't make no difference to me. What won't? Well, my tobacco or your tobacco inside my mouth. The I insides see. of my mouth has gotten so calloused with age, I wouldn't taste the kick of a mule. <laughs> but if you don't mind wasting it, no, I'll... No, no, go right ahead. Thanks. Wait till you're 86, son. Just wait till you're 86. I can wait. Here, you want a light? Oh, I got me own matches. I oh. never borrow what I got... Yeah, just use the that ashtray there on the table. Oh, right, right, son. Well, what do you know? Smell this here tobacco right there, right through the roof of my mouth. <laughs> you see, you're not as calloused as you think. Wonder if my palate's got so callous from talking or smoking. <laughs> Reckon from talking. My sister Delilah, she says I talk more than a chattering monkey. But I always kind of considered myself a... Uh, Silent man, slow spoken and tight tongue. Oh well, I guess no one sees themselves as others see them, which uh, for most folks is probably a good thing. It's a nice, uh, comfortable room. This here room of yours is. David, this room is blue with smoke. How many pipes are you smoke? Oh, howdy, ma'am. Why, Mister Tucker, is that you there behind that thick veil? Hello. Have you been hiding there all evening? Wished I had. Well, make yourself at home. I already am, and as such, I want to tell you something. Oh, oh, here we go. I noticed uh, something about you that's something that's very rare. Oh, I can't imagine. Your husband here invited me to sit down for a smoke with him, and I must say, ma'am, you're a woman among women. Oh? I, if I'd found a woman of your understanding when I was a lad, I dare say I would have let myself get married, too. Well, I love the smell of pipe smoke. Is that unusual? No, no, it ain't what I'm leading up to. 
Yep, wait till I get home and tell my Delilah. It'll teach that sister of mine a couple of things. What will teach your sister what, Mr. Tucker? You're the first woman, the first woman, ma'am, who has a decent-sized ashtray around the house. Me? Most females. I mean, I? They, they only got these here picky little namby-pamby ashtrays. Piece of glass or china. They don't allow their husbands the luxury of a decent-sized ashtray. David, what have you been telling Mr. Tucker? No, I, I, I haven't been telling Mr. Tucker anything. Anything I can't stand is having to tap out my pipe into an ashtray the size of a silver dollar. Then a woman blames you if you get ashes on the floor, ashes on the table. <clears throat> you sure are to be congratulated. This is a plot. See? See what the comfort it is to tap my pipe out into a full-grown ashtray? David, the flower bowl. <laughs> yep, Mrs. Norton, your wife. <laughs> Your wife, Mr. Norton, she's quite a woman. Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Tucker, Claudia and I were discussing ashtrays just before you came here. Mr. Tucker, there, there's something I have to uh, tell I, you. I'm, I'm talking. David, I, I... Mr. Tucker, one thing that Claudia simply insists on having around the house are things to make life pleasanter and, and easier and, and so much simpler for a man. Oh, David. And one of those things, since I happen to be a pipe smoker, I mean, you know I've always been a pipe smoker... One of the things that I have to have is a good-sized, great big, convenient ashtray. Well, sure be a lucky man. You see, Claudia doesn't go in for all those little saucers and fancy silver or glass or china dishes. Oh, no, sir. She, she realizes the value of giving a man what he needs. I can't stand it. And the fact that an ashtray is a little out of proportion to her table, why, poof. Claudia is enough of a woman to overcome that. David, I hate you. Well, keep talking, son. My jaw is dropping in respect. Uh, just one more word, Mr. Tucker. Usually, I don't like to compliment my wife too much. Well, it ain't a good idea. Oh, but one must give the devil her due. Claudia knows that the secret of our happy, unruffled marriage, Mr. Tucker, is a good-sized ashtray. Hey, hey, what was that? The saucer broke? Uh, darling, you, you dropped your little ashtray. No, it, it, it's not a little ashtray, David. It's just a little piece of the past. When it's time for one of your favorite radio programs, make the most of that interlude. Relax thoroughly. Have a bottle of ice-cold Coca-Cola handy. Sit back, drink, and listen refreshed. And if guests join you of an evening for a popular radio show, serve Coke all around. Let everyone enjoy the pause that refreshes. Say, uh, do you notice Mrs. Norton, she didn't blink an eyelash when she dropped that ashtray? Because there's more to it than meets an eyelash, Mr. Tucker. Well, there always is, son. Well, I've had my pipe. I best be getting home. Will we see you tomorrow? I don't believe so. Mr. Norton, he's taking Mrs. Norton into the big city with him. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I guess a woman's got to win the shop and feel citified once in a while, so he's taking her to dinner to some fancy restaurant, he told me. And thank you for telling me. Well, it was my pleasure. I always enjoy repeating what ain't a secret. What is a secret? <laughs> Them's what I enjoy repeating even more. Well, so long, son. Goodbye, Mr. Tucker. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>